Yo, how's it going everyone? Hope you're doing good. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be checking out a tutorial on how to drift on steering wheel with no assist, full rotation, you know, proper realistic steering wheel drifting on CarX Drift Racing Online. This is going to work on the G920, G29, G923 and pretty much any wheel uh, with force feedback. So let's get into it. So first we're going to start off by showing you my steering wheel settings. So obviously we've got manual gearbox, manual clutch, so realistic you know, gear changes and clutch. Then you want steering wheel assist off, obviously. If you don't have this off, basically the game will not counter steer and it won't drift properly like a real drift car. So you definitely want steering wheel assist off. Controller assist doesn't matter because we're on steering wheel. And then you want the max rotation that your steering wheel handles, so 900 or 1080 for realistic drifting. And then you want 0.7, 0.8 for the force feedback, something along those lines, but depends on your tune setup. And that's it, that's my basic steering wheel settings. You can change it a little bit if you want, but that's what I'd recommend starting out on. Now let's get into a beginner, you know, basic tune setup. So feel free to copy this tune setup as a nice beginner tune. And um, yeah, then we'll get into how to drift all the proper techniques, you know, how to drift on wheel and everything. So feel free to pause this video, copy this tune up. As you can see, with all our tunes, no tire rub, even when the car is drifting or steering on full lock. And pretty much all of the tune settings are realistic to real life. They're how a drift car should be set up. No glitched, low Ackerman, sort of cheap tunes. None of that sort of stuff. Realistic tune settings for realistic physics that will teach you real drifting techniques so yeah realistic setup giving you realistic physics i'll uh, just leave you with the rest of the tune setup and once you've uh, finished copying this up then we will get into actual drifting techniques and we'll show you how to drift on a wheel how to start a drift um, maintain a drift transition all that sort of stuff and hopefully by the end you'll go from not knowing how to drift on a steering wheel to being able to drift a full track all in one go without crashing so now let's actually get into drifting techniques and show you how to drift on wheel. I'd recommend starting out on Navarro Base A. Just make your own private lobby or go onto the training on the campaign on the single player mode. So you're just in your own game on Navarro Base A. And then what you want to do is drive towards the middle of the map here. As you can see, I'll show you one of the places you can get out of the map. So as soon as you spawn in, just drive here and go for this little gap. And there you are, out into this open, wide space. It's all flat. It's perfect for learning how to drift. And now the very first thing you want to learn on drifting a steering wheel is letting the wheel go and letting the wheel spin through your hands. As you can see here, I'm trying to demonstrate the wheel um, counter steering or self steering um, as it does in real life. Um, and yeah, basically you just want to get the natural feel and uh, just get used to how it feels when the car spins through your hand. So start doing like a turn to the right. You'll feel the weight of the car when you do that turn and then just give it a little bit of extra throttle and you will, you know, let go of the wheel and you'll feel the wheel uh, spin through your hands like this. So turn to the right, give it a bit of gas and then the wheel, you know, the car will break loose, start a drift and the wheel will turn the opposite way to the way that you're turning as you can see here. So just get used to um, you know, starting a drift by turning, giving it a bit of gas, letting go of the wheel, and then catching the wheel. So um, just get used to this feeling for a little bit, um, because this is the hardest thing to get used to really, especially if you're brand new to drifting on a steering wheel. It will feel very weird to let go of the wheel and to let it spin through your hands. But just get, you know, get used to it a little bit, get the feeling of it. And that's the first step on learning how to drift on a steering wheel. So the next thing we're going to learn is different methods to start a drift, to initiate a drift. We've already learned one method which is to turn the car, start to feel the understeer and start to feel the weight of the car, then give it a bit of extra throttle and uh, that will start a drift. There's lots of different ways but um, practice this first method um, which is you know just turn to the side, to the left or to the right and then feel the weight of the car on the steering wheel, give it a bit of extra gas, let the wheel go, catch it again you know, after it's done its counter steer and just practice this for a little bit. This is the first way to enter a drift and probably the easiest. The next method we're gonna show you is more of a weight transfer uh, initiation. So as you can see, we're kind of swinging the car left and right and we're using the actual weight of the car and the inertia of the, you know, weight transfer 
to start that drift. This is a bit more of a technical um, you know, way to start a drift, but it's kind of like an old school Japanese style of uh, you know, drifting, like toge drifting for example. Definitely very useful and definitely something you want to learn. Now the next technique we're going to learn is clutch kicks. Now what a clutch kick is, is just holding the throttle and the clutch at the same time, which builds up the revs of the car, then letting out the clutch, which will spin the wheels of the car really quickly, and that will start off your drift, and also give you a little bit of a kind of a speed boost, or will start the wheels obviously spinning really fast. And as you can see here, you can actually use the clutch kick to pull away in second gear, and even start drifting from a slow speed. So it's very useful for lots of different things. Um, if you're in high, too high of a gear, if um, you need to catch up a little bit of speed to do a tandem or something like that, a clutch kick entry is uh, probably the best way to go and it's very popular in drifting. It's what most people uh, tend to use most of the time for initiating a drift. But yeah, just practice it. So build up the throttle and then hold the clutch and the throttle at the same time for a split second. So yeah, hold the throttle down and then basically kick the clutch. That's why it's called a clutch kick. And that will just give a little burst of, uh, you know, revs to the uh, engine and wheels and spin them up a bit and start off your drift obviously break traction the car will start a drift and um, yeah just uh, practice this a little bit clutch kick drifting not just to the left but to the right you know don't just practice turning one way and then another method that we're using here to start a drift is kind of a sharp turn in so once again a completely different method you kind of give it a really sharp turn to the direction you want to drift and then you know split second later the car will um, you know break traction and start drifting as you can see here so you just give us a, a sharp turn to the direction you want to drift and then like a split second later you know you let go of the car it self steers and starts drifting so that's another method as well so we're trying to teach you kind of all the methods of initiating a drift and then next we'll get into how to maintain a drift and before we do that, obviously you can't do a drifting tutorial without mentioning the handbrake. But unfortunately, on every single one of the Logitech um, steering wheels, the G920, the G27, uh, the, even the new wheel, none of them have an option for a handbrake, so we're not going to show that in this video. But it's pretty simple. It's um, you know, about as easy as a clutch kick, really. Um, it breaks the traction in a different way. Obviously, instead of spinning the wheels, the handbrake locks the back wheels up, so it stops the back wheels. So you break traction and start a drift by locking back wheels up. Um, it's quite a popular thing in drifting, but again, you don't need it at all. As you can see, we're drifting fine about it. Um, it's also kind of a noob thing on drifting. You want to avoid using the handbrake and try and learn clutch. If you can, that's the better way to drift. Um, so yeah, we're not going to cover the handbrake in this video because I don't have one on this wheel and nobody using a Logitech wheel has one either um, unless they've modded it on PC. So we'll leave that out for now. But um, it's a pretty simple technique, and uh, if you do have a handbrake, you'll figure it out easily anyway. But yeah, so now we've learned pretty much all of the techniques for initiating a drift. You know, weight transfer, clutch kick, um, giving it a bit of gas, um, even handbrake and stuff like that. Once you've learned all these techniques, um, just get used to them. Try the different techniques out. Also, it's not like you use one or the other when drifting. You kind of use a combination of all of them all of the time. You know, so you might do a drift that uses a bit of weight transfer and a little bit of clutch kick rather than you know just clutch kick or just weight transfer so it's all it's all drifting is basically a combination of all these techniques um, you know when you initiate a drift so practice all of these techniques mix them up a bit do like a half you know weight transfer half clutch kick initiation and uh, yeah the next thing we'll get onto is how to maintain a drift so how to keep a good drifting angle how not to spin out how to um, yeah, just keep a good drift going. Um, but I think we're going to do that in a part two video and we're going to wrap this video up here. But um, make sure you subscribe and drop a like if this um, helped you. If this, um, you know, settings, tune, and how to initiate a drift tutorial helped you. I hope it did. And um, make sure you subscribe. And the next video, I'm pretty sure, will be up tomorrow, which will cover everything else, which will be maintaining a drift, learning how to transition and also learning how to do a figure of eight drift and then how to drift a full track. So I think we'll do it in two parts. This has been part one and part two we'll do tomorrow. But yeah, really appreciate you watching this whole video. Hope it helped you. And 
you know, stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed for tomorrow's video where we're going to cover basically everything else. And uh, yeah, other than that, have a good rest of your day. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.